listening to Radio Yesterova. Our station, our talent, our people. Die ding rukkie. Jou kom terug op Radio Yesterova. A sound from heaven As a rushing Oh, a mighty wind Oh, it filled every heart With singing And it gave them peace Within Oh yes the prophet Gave The promise Thank God The spirit Shall Descend And from Their inner Most
Radio Radio Eesterwe. Welcome to this afternoon's broadcast of A Study in the Word. This is Evangelist Elmer addressing you from the studios of Radio Easter River in Cape Town, South Africa. May the Lord bless you and may He be with you. Beautiful song we just listened to speaking about there is a river. And this comes from the book of Psalms, chapter number 46, where the Bible says there is a river where of the stream shall make glad the city of God. Hallelujah. And this river flows from the throne of God. Jesus says, Ye that believe in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water shall flow from his belly. And thus spoke ye of the spirit that they would receive that believe in him. And that is just what we rejoice in. Hallelujah. Many years ago, there was a man of God that said that he stood next to a fountain and he thought to himself, if he would speak to this fountain and ask it why it's bubbling, the fountain wouldn't, would answer and say, it's not me that's bubbling, it's something within me that's bubbling. And that is how this river of life is. It is something that bubbles with inside of you. It's something that flows. It's something that's alive. And this something is the spirit of God. And without his spirit, we can do nothing hallelujah his spirit gives the leadership the guidance the direction and he teaches us through his spirit the bible says that all your children shall be taught of the lord and the lord teaches us through his spirit and we're just grateful for the lord not leaving us behind as those that have no parents or those that are left as orphans but the lord says i will return unto you Yes, you will return as the comforter. He says, it is the spirit of the truth that the world does not know and the world also cannot receive. But you know him because he now dwells with you and shall be in you. Hallelujah. Now we're going to read this afternoon from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan thou, and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall thread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and even unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, Turn not from it to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wherever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. If I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou must dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. So we want to speak from this first chapter of Joshua about the placing of the land and also at the same time the placing of the church. Hallelujah. So we see God commissioning Joshua after the death of Moses. Now Moses had fulfilled his task. He had finished his commission and his task was to lead the children of Israel out of bondage from the land of Egypt. 
Now we know that they were suppressed and oppressed in Egypt and they were being used as slaves by Pharaoh. And we see how that Pharaoh also launched an attack to try and kill the children of Israel. And we see how that they were really going through difficulties. But God remembered his promise which he spoke unto Abraham, the ancestor, that he would give his descendants this land, this land of Canaan, this land that was flowing with milk and honey. And God remembered his promise, his covenant. And God also heard the cry of his people. And God sent a deliverer by the name of Moses to lead them out. Now, if we look into shadows and types, we see that Moses is a type of Jesus Christ. We've spoken about this as well in a previous broadcast, how that we can see the similarities between Moses and Jesus. How did we see that by the time Moses was approximately two years old, that Pharaoh uh, issued a command that all children from two years and younger should be killed. So we see it was the same with Jesus in Matthew chapter 2, that King Herod also gave a command. So it was Satan in Pharaoh and it was Satan in King Herod trying to kill the deliverer. But we see Moses escaping death by being put in a basket, hallelujah, on the river. And we see also Jesus escaping death as an infant, as a child, by his stepfather Joseph taking him to Egypt after he received a warning, a godly warning in a dream. Yes, God spoke to Joseph in a dream. God sent an angel in a dream to speak to Joseph. And we see there's so many similarities. Just as Moses did many signs and wonders and miracles, Jesus also did many signs, wonders and miracles. However, Jesus is superior to Moses. The Bible speaks about this in Hebrews chapter 3. How that Christ is superior to Moses. And it was Moses that wrote in Deuteronomy 18 that the Lord their God would raise a prophet likened unto him. And Jesus is that prophet likened unto Moses. We see this fulfilled in Acts chapter 3 where the apostle Peter was telling the people that Jesus is that prophet. Hallelujah. Even Stephen the first martyr for Christ made mention of this in the book of Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 6, Acts chapter 7, where he gave his testimony. He also referred to this promise which God gave through Moses that he would send somebody as a, a deliverer, somebody that would be likened unto Moses. And the commandment was clear that the people had to listen unto this prophet, which is Jesus. Hallelujah. So we see as, as Moses brought the children of Israel out, he delivered them, he redeemed them. We see also the same with Jesus, that he is our deliverer, he is our savior, hallelujah, he is our redeemer. And just as Moses led them out of Egypt, so Jesus also leads the believer out of the world, hallelujah. But now we see that Moses completed his task. And he came to his end. His life came to an end and he died and he was buried. And the Bible says that even to this day his grave was not found. And we also find testimony in the Bible speaking how that the devil and the archangel Michael were fighting over the body of Moses. And we see after Moses' time expired on earth, God raised up Joshua. Now Joshua was there all the time. He was the minister of Moses. Hallelujah. He was the servant of Moses. He was very close to Moses. And we see with Joshua, God directly addressing him, speaking to him. And Joshua completed that work. He completed the task. And it was Joshua that took them into the promised land. Hallelujah. Moses brought them out and Joshua took them in. And so we see that it is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It is Christ in another manifestation in spirit form that takes you into the promised land. That takes you into heaven. The Bible says if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal bodies, he shall also quicken your mortal bodies through that spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that will resurrect the believers at the resurrection. It is the Holy Spirit that will rapture the believers up at the return of Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit that leads you into heaven, that leads you into all truth. Hallelujah. And so we see just as it was from one, one ministry to the other from 
Moses to Joshua it was still the same God hallelujah and just as it was Jesus Christ in human form it is now also Jesus Christ in spirit form in the form of the Holy Spirit it is still the same God hallelujah the same God just in another manifestation in the Old Testament he was God above us in the New Testament he became God with us Emmanuel and then we see in the current dispensation we see him being God in us through the Holy Spirit hallelujah now God gives a clear command to Joshua what he should do how did he should divide the land as an inheritance for the people how did he should meditate upon the word of God so Joshua in himself was a great leader in the sight of God and he had a tremendous task on his shoulder to lead the people of God into this land hallelujah now we've been speaking about several topics that all go under one we've been speaking about immortality which is eternal life we have been speaking about the children of god we've been speaking about the adoption of children yes we have been speaking about all these subjects that go in one topic and now today we want to go a little bit further and we want to show you by the help of god just as joshua took the children of Israel into the promised land and divided the land. He was the one instructing them. If you study the book of Joshua, you will see how that he divided each portion of the land, where he placed the tribe of Reuben, where he t- placed the tribe of Benjamin, where he placed the tribe of Simeon, where he placed the tribe of Judah and all the tribes. We know there's one tribe that did not get any portion of land allotted to them, and that was the tribe of Levi. And God made it plain that he is the inheritance and that they are to be ministers unto him so they did not get a specific portion of the land but the other tribes there was very clear instructions of where they had to place themselves where they had to locate themselves it was in fact God locating them at those different places God giving them certain territory where they should settle down and where they should live now just as it was Joshua placing them into the land placing them in the different geographical locations so it is also in the new testament the holy spirit that places the believer into the body of christ the bible says in first corinthians chapter 12 in verse 13 for by one spirit are you all baptized into one body hallelujah so it is the spirit that baptizes you and then after the spirit baptism it has an effect it has a result and if we go to first corinthians chapter number 12 the apostle paul writes it very clearly to us he says now concerning spiritual gifts brethren i would not have you ignorant you know that you were gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as you were led wherefore i give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of god call of jesus accursed and that no man can say that jesus is the lord but by the holy ghost now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit and there are differences of administrations but the same lord and there are diversities diversities of operations but it is the same God which worketh all in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but all these work of that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will for as the body is one and have many members and all the members of that body one body being many are one body so also is christ for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be jews or gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit hallelujah so here the apostle lists the different spiritual gifts and what we should really take note of is verse 11 it says dividing to every man severally as he will just as joshua was dividing the land hallelujah just as he was placing them into the different sections that they should inhabit in the land so it is the spirit that divides into his body that places 
wills. It is not the will of man when it comes to these spiritual gifts in the body of Christ, but it is the will of God. God sits, God places, God gives, hallelujah. It is all gifts of God. And we see that there are nine spiritual gifts. There are also nine fruits of the Spirit. If you read Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, where the Apostle Paul lists the nine fruits of the Spirit. So there are nine gifts of the Spirit and there are nine fruits of the Spirit, hallelujah. That is how the Spirit operates. That is how the, the Spirit manifests. Now, when it comes to these gifts, the Bible makes it very plain that by one spirit are you baptized into the body and then it is the spirit, hallelujah. It's all the working of God. It is not what you have done. It is not what you have achieved or accomplished to, to merit this, but it is God working all in all, hallelujah. Just as the children of Israel, it was unmerited favor. <coughs> it was the grace of God. They did nothing to deserve the land. Even the ancestor Abram did nothing to deserve the land. But God by grace and God by election. Hallelujah. It is God that bestowed grace unto Abram. That bestowed his favor upon Abram. And God chose him by election. And that is what we spoke about on the previous broadcast, where we made it very plain where the Bible sp speaks about predestination and about election. There are those individuals that God knew before the foundation of the world. God knew that they would choose the right way and therefore God chose them. Hallelujah. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. And we see it is all the working of God. It is God that calls you out. It is God that sanctifies you. It is God that fills you with his spirit. It is God that gives you a gift. It is all the working of God. Even the works of grace that we have mentioned on previous broadcasts, whether it is justification by faith, sanctification by the blood, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, these are all works of grace. These are all the works of God. It is God that works it all in all. Hallelujah. God is in complete control of his church. God is in complete control of his work. God is in complete control of his word. Hallelujah. There's no man that can override God. There's no man that can be above God. But it is God that is all in all and above all. Hallelujah. Now we see that God gives these gifts into his church. And these gifts have a purpose. They have a meaning. God does not give the gifts for foolishness. God gives it to his glory to begin with. And then God gives his gifts, hallelujah, to edify the body of Christ. Hallelujah. To encourage the believers, hallelujah, to keep them in line, to bless them. So these gifts are not given to glorify any individual. Whether it is the spiritual gifts or the gifts to the ministry. God does not give gifts to people so that they can glorify themselves or idolize themselves or attract people to themselves, but it is to attract people to God and His Word. Hallelujah. It is God working, hallelujah, through those gifts to reach other people. And God uses instruments, and these instruments are in His body. Hallelujah. Just as you and I use our natural body, you use your hands for something, you use your eyes for something, you use your ears for something god uses his body to do his work and that is the reason god poured out his spirit it was to continue his works the same works that christ did is what the church ought to also do because it is christ in them working these works hallelujah so these works are there for that purpose to bring us into the unity of the faith and the Bible says there are different gifts and different administrations. If we read further, the Bible says, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God has set the members, every one of them in the body, as it have pleased him. And if they were all one, member where were the body but now there are many members yet but one body and the eye cannot say unto the hand i have no need of thee nor again the head to the feet i have no need of you nay much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon which we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness for our part for our comely parts have no need but god have tempered the body together having given every 
even more ab- abundant honor to that part which lacked that there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have be the s- have the sh- same care for one another and where the one member suffer all the members suffer with it or one member be honored all the members rejoice with it now you are the body of Christ and members in particular and God have said some in the church first the apostles second the prophets third the teachers after that miracles then gifts of healing helps governments diversities of tongues are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers are all workers of miracles and have all the gifts of healing do all speak with tongues do all interpret but covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show i unto you a more excellent way we're going to take a break quickly we shall continue after the song speaking about these different gifts god bless you you are listening to radio yesterday yes, yes, our station our talent our people the number of people sound from heaven as a rushing oh my dear wind oh it filled every heart with singing and it gave them within Oh yes the prophet gave the promise thank God the spirit shall descend and from And 
then he said, if you'll drink of this one, you'll never thirst you are listening to again. Sing the song now. Station, our talent, and our people. Yes, our station, our talent, our people. God bless you and welcome back to this afternoon's broadcast of Study in the Word. May the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you and be with you. So we're speaking about the placing of the children of Israel into the promised land, which runs parallel also with the Holy Spirit placing the believers into the body of Christ. Now we see that there are genuine gifts of God, yes, genuine gifts, genuine ministries. And these ministries are given by God himself. It is the Holy Spirit that places you into the body of Christ, subject to the gifts for service. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is the one that selects and that decides what you are to do into the body of Christ. It is not your own choosing. It is not your own election. But it is God himself that is in control. God is the head of the body, hallelujah, and the head decides what the body does, where it goes, how it functions. So the members submit under the head, hallelujah, the body submits under the head, and Christ himself places these gifts, and these gifts serve as a purpose, it serves as the purpose of for the edification of the body of Christ, but most importantly, to glorify God and to continue his work upon the earth. Jesus said that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. With new tongues shall they speak. If they take up anything dead, they shall not harm them. Uh, if they take up serpents, he shall not harm them. Jesus said these signs shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus also said that he that believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit comes and embodies the believer, and places the same believer into the body of Christ. And it is Christ in the believer continuing his works. The same works that Christ did while he was upon the earth is the same works that continue through the church, through the believer, hallelujah. They do exactly what Christ did. If the spirit of someone was in you, you would be like that person and do like that person does. The same it is with the spirit of Christ. If Christ is in you, you act like Christ, you do like Christ, you are like Christ because Christ is in you. And the Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory, hallelujah. It is Christ that embodies the church and continues his work upon the face of the earth. Now, just as there are genuine apostles, genuine prophets, genuine evangelists, teachers, 
pastors. So they are also counterfeits. And this is what we should really be vigilant of and be aware of. We should have discernment of spirit. Now discerning of spirits is also a spiritual gift, which we read in 1 Corinthians 12, where the Bible speaks about these different gifts. The discerning of spirits. We have a command in 1 John chapter 4, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. Hallelujah. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, just as there are true prophets, there are also false prophets. And Jesus gave us an explicit warning in Matthew chapter 24, where he said that we should take heed that no man deceives us, because many shall come in his name and they shall say, I am the Christ. Now, the word Christ means anointed one. Yes, just as Jesus was the anointed one, Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings. Just as the spirit came upon Jesus, making him the anointed one, the Christ, so also every true child of God that has the spirit upon him is a true anointed one. But then there is also the counterfeit. There are also those that say that they are anointed, but Jesus says they will deceive many. So there will be many false anointed ones at the end time. That is the warning that Jesus gives us before his return. And these false prophets, we have a criteria according to which we can judge them. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 23 that these false prophets, they say that the people will prosper while the people are living in iniquity, while the people are living contrary to the will of God. Yet they are strengthening the hands of the wicked. And we see that these are the ones that normally just speak about riches and gold and silver and prosperity but they do not rebuke and call the people back to God rebuke the wrong things and call people unto repentance that is what the true prophets did in Bible days they came on the scene when people were many times backslidden from God and they revealed people's sin and they cried out against sin God commanded the prophet Isaiah and said that he should lift his voice like a trumpet and he should make known unto his people the iniquities, their transgressions. And we see all the prophets were like that. They always called people back to faith and obedience in the true God. And they cried out against the evil things that people were doing. The false prophets do the exact opposite. In fact, they strengthen the hands of the wicked. They tell people it's fine to live the way they're living even though it is condemned by God. They are the ones that only speak pleasant words that people want to hear and we have a, a warning for the end times like that where the bible says in the book of second timothy chapter 4 that the time will come where people because they have itchy ears they will heap unto themselves teachers teachers that will speak to their own heart yes teacher that's, that will speak words that they want to hear and that is the sad case today but the many false prophets that are seen in the world. The Bible says in Matthew 24 verse 24 that there shall be many false Christs and many false prophets and they shall do great signs and wonders if it were possible to deceive even the very elected. Now once again, signs and wonders, as we've stated on previous broadcasts, signs and wonders are there to prove and vindicate the word of God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 that God bearing record by signs and wonders. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16 that the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs and wonders that followed. So the signs is there to back up the word. We should follow the word and then the signs will follow us. But if signs, wonders and miracles are being made the emphasis are being made the major thing then something is wrong because God doesn't major signs wonders and miracles he majors his word signs wonders and miracles follow they follow the word of God to prove that it is God that spoke it hallelujah and the false prophets the Bible says they will do if we study 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Bible says, As Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so shall these men also withstand the truth. 
Now we see that Janus and Jambres were uh, magicians in Egypt. So they also did miracles but through the powers of darkness. Now when Moses did the true miracles, we see that Janus and Jambres comes and they impersonate, they copy. But they did not have the true word that Moses had. Moses had the word of God in its truth. And he was preaching it the same way. Moses had the command of God and he was preaching it to Pharaoh. And he was preaching it to the people of God. But with the false prophets, we see they don't have that. God even says in Jeremiah 23 that he did not send them. He did not command them. He did not give his words into their mouths. But they are lying. And they are saying God has spoken when God is not spoken at all and this is the danger of the false prophet and the end result is to deceive the people and also those that say that they are apostles we know that the true apostles in bible days if you read romans chapter 15 the bible says that how you know an apostle is through these mighty signs and wonders paul himself said how that god used him through mighty signs, wonders, and miracles to make the Gentiles obedient in word and in deed. Apostle, the Bible says, is somebody that is sent. The word apostle means one that is sent. So an apostle is somebody that has a commission of God. God spoke directly to him. And in Revelation chapter 2, Jesus says that the church in Ephesus, they have tried them that say that they are apostles and are not so. And have yes. Now, if any man is an apostle and is an apostle of God, you will not contradict the other apostles that have already come upon the scene. Apostles like Peter, apostles like Paul, apostles like John and James and all of them. You will not contradict them, but you will be in agreement in an alignment with them. And that is how the church in Ephesus knew that there were those that claimed to be apostles but were not. Because what they were teaching and preaching was contrary to what the apostles were preaching and teaching. And when it comes to teaching, there is a genuine gift. There is a genuine ministry to be a teacher. Hallelujah. To teach the word of God. God has given that ability and God has even given the command. If you read in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus told the disciples, Go ye therefore teaching all nations. Hallelujah. So that is a command of Jesus and it is a genuine gift. It is a genuine ministry of God that there must be teachers to teach people the word of God. But we also have the warning in 2 Peter chapter 2 that just as there were false prophets among the people, so there shall be false teachers among you. So that is something that we should really have discernment for. There are those that teach the word of God. Hallelujah. There are those that have the God-given ability to take the respective scriptures and bring them into one place and make you to understand. Hallelujah certain bible topics but then there are also the false teachers and the false teachers the easiest way to catch them out is when they start teaching things that are contrary to the bible when they are teaching things that are contrary to what the teachers of the bible have already taught God does not contradict himself. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. God will not send one man in this day and age and give him a certain teaching or message. It gets written down in the Bible and then somebody else comes later on the scene with a teaching that contradicts what God gave to begin with. God cannot contradict himself. And many times those that are false teachers, they expose themselves by teaching things that are either not found in the Bible or that are contrary to the Bible. And we should have discernment for this because if not, we can easily fall into a trap of being deceived. And then we see there are genuine gifts of being evangelist. An evangelist in plain terms is somebody that preaches the gospel. I like it the way it is expressed in the Afrikaans language. Evangelist is somebody that preaches the evangelie. And that is what an evangelist is. It is somebody that preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the Bible also gives us a warning in Galatians chapter 1 from verse 8. 
The Bible says, though we or an angel from heaven comes and preaches another gospel, separate or different from the gospel that we have already preached, let him be accursed. Now the gospel of Jesus Christ is written down in the Bible for us. And the apostles were preaching this gospel of Jesus Christ. If we are preaching something else, something contrary, something different than what they have preached, the Bible says that such people place themselves under a curse. They are cursed. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is summarized in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He speaks about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Paul says that I delivered unto you like I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again according to the scriptures. Paul was preaching this gospel. He was summarizing the gospel. The gospel is about repentance, about forgiveness of sins, about everlasting life. The gospel is about the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. The gospel also contains all the teachings of Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. That is the good news. And anything contrary to that is not the good news. Anything contrary to the teachings of Jesus is false. Anything contrary to what the apostles were preaching, it is false. And today there's many gospels that's being preached out there. Perverted gospels. The Bible says there isn't another gospel, but there be some that pervert the gospel of Christ. Now if we read in, in the Bible when it comes to the gospel, God never sent anyone in the Bible in the New Testament to tell you how to get, to get money. God never sent anybody in the New Testament to tell you how to, to get assets and wealth and stuff like that. But God sent people in the New Testament in the Bible to preach to you the gospel of salvation hallelujah the gospel of god the gospel of repentance and remission of sins the gospel of eternal life the good news about jesus christ that came down that become a human being that died on the cross that shed his blood so that our sins could be forgiven and that he rose again on the third day and that if we believe in him not only can our sins be forgiven, yes, but also we can receive everlasting life. Hallelujah. The gospel has many teachings attached to it. Hallelujah. Teachings like the return of Christ. There are those that don't believe anymore that Christ will return. There are those even that preach there will be nothing like a rapture. And there are those that are scoffing. But the Bible says also in Second Peter chapter 3, it speaks about this, that there will come scoffers in the last days that will say, where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, everything remains the way it was. Now, if people preach things like that, they are preaching a false gospel. If they are preaching against the return of Christ, against the rapture, against repentance, against the remission of sins, if they are preaching another type of gospel that promise you wealth and riches but nothing about the repentance, then such a gospel, if you examine it with the New Testament, it is absolutely contrary and such teachings are not found in the Bible. Now there's also another gift that God gives in his church and that is to be a pastor. Yes, a shepherd. A shepherd is one that feeds the people and a shepherd feeds the sheep with sheep food and the sheep also don't eat anything else. They eat sheep food. They eat the word of God. But God also rebukes and God also condemns those that claim to be shepherds. If you read Ezekiel chapter 34, God speaks against the shepherds that are going after the wool. God speaks against those that are just trying to benefit from the people, trying to empty their pockets, trying to benefit financially from them, but not solving any problems of the people, not caring for the people, not, not guiding the people, not leading the people. And such the Bible also condemns as false shepherds. The Bible condemns them as as. Uh, Wolf in sheep's clothing, yes, deceivers. But those that are really true shepherds, they will have the people's interests at heart and not the people's money at heart. They will have the priority of the people's souls to their heart to tell the people the truth about God's word and to lead them into the right direction. A true shepherd is somebody that will love and care for God's people. Now what I've said you can read in Ezekiel chapter 34. And this is how we can distinguish. This is how we can distinguish the true prophet, apostle, teacher, evangelist, pastor from the false ones. And we should really be vigilant to not fall into any traps. We have the responsibility to read the Bible for ourselves. 
God said unto Joshua to read, to, to meditate upon the word of God. Yes, to read it himself, to meditate on it. Hallelujah. And that is the obligation also that you have. You must read the Bible for yourself. Hallelujah. We live in the information age where anyone can inform him or herself about any topic. If you can just read, hallelujah. If you can also just listen, you can just listen to what is being read. You have the responsibility to inform yourself, to make sure that you are on the right track. Do not rely on someone else's word, but you verify it yourself from God's word. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing me to speak and to inform this generation of what you have to say in your word. And now, Lord, I've done my part, and I pray that you will just do your part, Lord. May your spirit just take over and open the word for the people that they might hear and understand and believe and obey. Bless each and every person that was tuned in. Be with them, Lord. Bless them. Guide them into all truth. I pray this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, God bless you. Thank you for those that were tuned in. My contact number is 083-670-4657. 083-670-4657. As I go off the air, we listen to the song, There is a River, and God bless you until the next time. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Radio Yesterova. Our station, our talent, our people. Di dang ragi. A sound from heaven As a rushing Oh, a mighty wind Oh, it filled Every heart With singing And it gave Them peace Within Oh yes the prophet Gave The promise Thank You God. are listening to Radio Yesterova The spirit Shall Descend Do you want to take your business to the next level? Advertise with Radio Yesterova by emailing us at admin at radioyesterova.co.za. Our station, our talent, and our people. Radio Yesterova. Our station, our talent, our people. Tidang Raki.